2024 virtual meeting of the Anne Arundel County Council is now in session. We are here today to continue our work on the proposed FY25 budget for the for Anne Arundel County. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Smith. Present. Ms. Pickard. Here. Mr. Volke. Present. Ms. Hummer. Present. Ms. Fiedler. Present. Ms. Rodbian. Present. Ms. Ledbetter. Present. Madam Auditor Michelle Bolaire. Present. And Legislative Council Meredith Beach. Present. Everybody is accounted for, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please read the Open Meetings Act statement. The county attorney has asked that I read the following statement. The Maryland Open Meetings Act is a state law that requires public meetings to be open to the public and to be held in places reasonably accessible to individuals who would like to attend these meetings. In addition, provisions of the county charter and the rules of procedure of the county council require meetings to be open to the public and held in Annapolis as the county seat. The virtual format of this meeting of the county council includes alternate accessibility features that the Open Meetings Act Compliance Board and the courts have reviewed and approved, such as having a call-in phone number that allows anyone with a telephone to call and listen to the meeting, broadcasting the meeting with video and audio on cable TV and on the web, allowing written statements from the public to be filed with the clerk and considered by the council, and now allowing the public to call in via Zoom and testify live. The public access provided by this technology makes this virtual meeting reasonably accessible to the public as required by the Open Meetings Act. In addition, and for all of the same reasons, it is not necessary to suspend the rules of procedure of the County Council that apply to public participation in reasonable seating for the public or media or the location of the Council meetings. These rules have been deemed satisfied and do not need to be waived in order for this meeting to be held. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Under Section 709 of the Charter for Anne Arundel County, if the County Executive, oh, sorry, hold on. My apologies. The County Executive is proposing, I'm skipping my agenda. The County Executive is proposing additional amendments to the budget today, otherwise known as a supplemental budget. Mr. Budget Director, Chris Trumbauer, you have the floor. Very good. Well, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the council. I'm Chris Trumbauer, budget officer for Anne Arundel County. Um, I am pleased to introduce the supplemental amendments uh, this morning. I believe they've been shared with you all, uh, as well as the supplemental letter that I'll go through in a second. Uh, before I do that, I just do wanna take a moment and say um, you all did some good work yesterday and a lot of things have happened between then and now. And so I wanna take a moment to thank uh, my staff uh, particularly uh, Naomi and Sam uh, on the capital side and Stephen on the operating side. Uh, they were working uh, very late with uh, Madam Auditor staff to make sure that everything went smoothly today. So thank you, Ms. Bolayer and your team. And um, I am now with your permission, Madam Chair, I will share my screen so that we can walk through um, the supplemental letter uh, together. Okay, so hopefully you all can see this. Very good. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go through each of the operating amendments, supplemental amendments, because there's only a handful. But when I get to capital, there's a lot of technical amendments that are funding swaps or uh, corrections of technical errors and things like that. And I'm not going to go through all of those, but I will hit the highlights on anything that has an actual project impact, if that pleases the council. Um, okay, so as we walk through this, um, we're looking at our general fund current expense budget supplementals. We have one uh, for the CAO office, and uh, this does two things. Uh, it adds a $500,000 one-time grant for the New Village Academy uh, so that they can use that for capital build out. We were going to do this in the capital budget, but we found a simpler way to do it just as one-time funding in the operating. And then it also adds a uh, one-time funding of $90,000 to continue a program uh, at Maryland Hall uh, for art students. This was something that was previously funded um, by the Board of Education's ESSER funds. Those funds ran out. And so um, at a council member's request, we are including one year of funding here to help them transition into a longer term um, uh, timeline. 
Uh, you'll note here that when we've added an amendment based on a council member or the council request, I note it here so that you guys can get credit for it because that's how we like to do things. Um, all right, so moving forward, uh, the fire department, uh, they got a grant and they needed a match. So we're throwing in 50K for that. Um, information technology, this is actually for OEM, but it's in the IT budget. It's um, contractual cost increase for the mass notification uh, system. Uh, so that was late breaking. And so we're, we're adding 20,000 in there. And then uh, again, this is another council request, uh, but increasing business and travel um, and adding a senior legislation, legislative analysis position uh, for the legislative branch. Moving on to page two, uh, we have um, police department. We're just truing up the pay scale adjustment for police captains and then a council request for the public library system. Um, we're adding funding for a collection development specialist, which was one of the library's um, uh, priority uh, requests. That's it for the general fund. Uh, in other funds, uh, we got some new grant revenue, so we're appropriating that in the special grant revenue fund. Uh, you can see that's detailed. It hits several departments there. Um, in the Board of Education, we're realizing a late-breaking increase in state funding of $102,000 for pre-K private provider programs. Um, and then in the community development fund, this is about $106,000 from grant revenue uh, to true up the library ad in the general fund. This is the reconciliation in the library fund. And then finally, and let me tell you, if I'd never hear the word reforestation fund again for another couple of weeks, I will be happy because we had to do a lot of elbow grease on this one. But this is some maneuvering to make sure that all funds are appropriately accounted for and expended in the reforestation fund. There was a lot of back and forth between what should be in capital, what should be in operating, and this squares it up. Thank you again to uh, those on my staff and those on the auditor staff that work late to get this one buttoned up. Okay, so that concludes operating. Um, now, the bulk of the letter, the next three or four pages, is going to be capital. And as I mentioned before, uh, not going to go through everything because it's a lot of technical stuff. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask, but I'm going to try and keep it to the highlights. Um, so the first thing is just fixing a couple errors and omissions. And then we get down to section B, which is the actual supplemental requests. I'll call your attention uh, to the table here on page three which just summarizes um, all the uh, reductions that were done as part of Amendment Day yesterday. And that is freeing up the available funding through bonds and PAYGO and other funding sources that we're using to um, pay for the supplemental amendments that we'll go through, okay? So starting in the general fund, um, uh, again, a lot of these are not super sexy, but I'll hit on a couple of them. Um, I did want to touch on the first one. So we had originally planned for a grant that supported police equipment to be in the um, IT, but we're actually moving that over to the police department so they will have more ready access uh, to get the equipment they need. OIT is fine with that. Um, let's see. We're going to move up to the ones that were requested by the council. Okay, so under recreation and parks, um, you all know park renovation is a very important capital project. It's where the department uh, uses uh, its ability to fix a lot of uh, things, uh, parks or facilities, and um, things that don't come up or smaller things that don't um, have their own individual project class. And so uh, we always want to put as much money as possible in park renovations to allow them to do their backlog. And uh, thanks to the cuts that you all were able to make yesterday, we had some additional capacity. So there seemed to be a consensus to add $2 million to park renovation. That's a countywide project. It will benefit all the parks in all of your districts. And so we're pleased to support that. Uh, moving ahead to the roads and bridges classes, I wanna highlight an, a couple of other recurring projects. We're able to increase funding in both road resurfacing and road reconstruction. Again, this is thanks to the amendments that you did yesterday. This freed up available capital funding. And so we're increasing road resurfacing by 2.5 million and reconstruction by 1.5 million. Those are countywide projects. So um, that will benefit many individual roads. 
Uh, and then the Riva Road shared use path. This was a project that was funded in the proposed budget, but it didn't start until the out years. Uh, there was some interest in moving that forward, so it would be available um, more soon after all the construction on Reaver Road is done. So we were able to start the project in FY25 uh, with design, bring in land acquisition in 27, and then construction in fiscal 28. This had an uh, indirect benefit of because we're moving the project up, we were able to take some of the escalator escalating costs off so there's actually an overall project savings here because we're uh, expediting the timeline of that project. Uh, next in the traffic control class, uh, uh, council request uh, to increase funding by $20,000 to specifically support a Wrigley Avenue um, guardrail at the intersection of 175. Um, I did want to highlight um, the grant in the education class. This is supporting uh, clean, clean school buses, electric school buses, and uh, the Board of Ed believes this will be enough funding for six uh, new electric buses, along with the corresponding charging infrastructure and some other eligible expenses. So, uh, again, that's grant funding, but I thought that was uh, of interest to the Council to highlight. All right, moving through, uh, that was all of the ones that I considered to be kind of a policy impact or an additional funding rather than just uh, squaring up an increased cost estimate or a funding swap between impact fees and bonds or something like that. Um, so at the very last page, what you have here is our statement on final budgeting, and I'll just reiterate this. Um, the current expense budget supplemental request for the general fund is a total of $780,000. That's $140,000 of recurring and $640,000 of one time. So the amendments that the council passed yesterday uh, totaled $180,000 of recurring reduction. So you can see that this covers uh, the supplemental request. Um, as far as the one-time funding, uh, we did end up uh, transferring $600,000 of PAYGO um, to accommodate that. But in summary, if the council is to adopt all of these supplemental amendments, the county will still remain within our affordability guidelines. We're actually about $10 million under our affordability limits for the entire six-year CIP, which we always like to see. Um, and with that, I will stop the share and uh, thank you for having me and I'm pleased to answer any questions. I believe Ms. Fiedler has a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Trumbauer, for the presentation. Just a quick question on the Broadneck Trail, the 1.5 million in supplemental for util utilities and soils. Yeah. Are those unanticipated? Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, um, so I'm going to do my my best impersonation of DPW here, but um, you are very interested in this project and we've talked about it many times and uh, it's a complicated project. And so I think that they had they had a plan to move the utilities and then once they started digging into the dirt and everything, they encountered some complexities. So um, this, I think, would be unforeseen, um, although maybe not a total surprise because we knew this was a complicated project. Um, but when you when you hear me very uh, hopefully diplomatically um, pushing back against some of the recommended cuts in contingency for certain projects, this is a great example of how sometimes things do cost more than we thought. Um, but it's, a, it's an important project. It's a public safety project, uh, obviously, that section of road. So um, we were committed to it, but it did end up costing more than we expected. And what section of the trail is this? Um, I, don't, I don't know the specifics of that. We would have to ask DPW to get the exact location. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions for my colleagues? Madam Auditor, anyone? Okay, seeing no questions, I'll move forward with under section 709 of the Charter for Anne Arundel County. If the county executive proposes amendments to the budget so as to increase items in the budget or add items to the budget, the county council must give reasonable public notice of the proposed amendments and hold a public hearing on the amendments. Unless the county council waives the requirement for a public hearing, it takes five votes to waive this public hearing. 
May I have a motion to waive the public hearing required by section 709 of the charter? So moved. Rodvian second. second. Rodvian second. Madam, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on the motion to waive the public hearing on required section 709 of the charter. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Aye. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. The motion to waive the public hearing for section 709 has been adopted. Thank you, Madam Secretary. The motion to waive the public hearing required by seven by section 709 of the charter has passed. A hearing will not be held. However, public notice and copies of the supplemental budget will be provided on our website following this meeting. Is there any other business any council member would like to bring before the county council at this time? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. A better second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. The county council is adjourned until 10 a.m. on Friday, June 14th, 2024, when we will meet in person in the council chambers to vote finally on the entire proposed FY25 budget. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.